what is Bitcoin and how does it work and why is everyone going crazy over it and am I going to lose my money and is it a Ponzi scheme and where does it come from and how do I keep it and how do I use it? That's what I want to know. Hi, everybody. This is Crypto Rich working with you to get rich with crypto, filling our pockets with crypto profits. This is a series of videos that I'm doing with a very special guest to find out what Bitcoin is and explain in really simple terms what it is, how it works, how to store it, how to get some and pretty much everything anybody would ever need to know to go from being a no coiner to a Bitcoiner. Interested in cryptocurrencies? but don't know how to get started or which projects are worth investing in for the short term, medium term or long term? Leverage human experts, data and machine learning to become a better crypto investor with token metrics. Sign up with my link and secure your financial future with cryptocurrencies now. My name is Crypto NC and the NC is no coiner. And I've got some basic questions about Bitcoin. And if anybody's watching this has also got some basic questions about Bitcoin, put them in the comments below because then, then Crypto Rich, you'll answer them maybe in a subsequent video at some point. Make sure you subscribe, click the notification bell so you know when the video comes out and like and comment and a, and a thumbs up. Give us a thumbs up, come on. Thumbs up, click that, click that thumbs up. Okay, Crypto NC, what's your first question? Well, it's kind of obvious, isn't it? What is Bitcoin? Well, Bitcoin is a type of cryptocurrency. What's that? What's a cryptocurrency? Cryptocurrencies are forms of digital money, but they're completely decentralized. What does that mean? Okay, let me break it down. You know you have digital money in your bank account if you do internet banking. Also, when you go and use a debit card in a in a shop or an ATM or something, you haven't actually got any physical money. It's all happening digitally. All right. However, that form of digital currency, which is operated by banks and the stock exchange and governments, is centralized. It's controlled. It's controlled by the banks. It's issued by the banks. It's controlled by central go central government and by regulations. So that is centralized. Bitcoin as a form of cryptocurrency isn't that. It's not centralized. Okay. So if it's not centralized, what is it? Uncentralized? It's decentralized. So what that means is it's spread out all over the place. There's no central point of control. All right. So it's all over the place. It's decentralized. It's digital. Well, how, can, how is it controlled and who made it and all that? Well, let's start with when it began and who started it. So we know when it began, it was in January, I think January the 3rd, 2009. And who started it? We don't know. Wait a minute. We don't know. People are putting in loads and loads and loads of dollar into this currency. What we don't know, who started it? What's that about? It sounds like a scam. <laughs> well, it can sound like a scam if you're looking from the paradigm of fiat currencies. You have to leave what you know about regular money, you know, your pounds, your dollars, your euros, fiat currencies, you have to leave all that behind in order to consider what Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies are. Okay, let's step back a bit. What do you mean by fiat currencies? Right, a fiat currency is a coin that's issued by a central government or a bank that has issuing authority. And by fiat, I don't mean the Italian cars, just in case you're going to ask. What I mean is that it's, I think it's Latin, for by decree. So essentially, when the government when the, or the Bank of England or a bank in the UK issues pounds, they're saying that this has value. The government's declaring that it has value. It's official currency. Same deal in the US with the US dollar or in um, European Union nations with the euro. The governments there say by fiat, by declaration. Bitcoin isn't by declaration. Well, what's it, what's it by then? Why does it have value? Well, ultimately, it has value because people agree that it has value. You know, if you have any Bitcoins and you don't think they have any value, you can send them to me. I don't mind because I and plenty of other people agree that it has value. And more and more people are increasingly thinking that Bitcoin has value, which we'll come back to in a bit, right? Let me go back to where it came from. So Bitcoin was started by somebody called Satoshi Nakamoto. We, that's a pseudonym. We don't know if it's a pseudonym for one person or for a group of people. We have no idea. What Satoshi Nakamoto did was he or she or they wrote a paper talking about money that couldn't be duplicated and it couldn't be censored. What do you mean it couldn't be duplicated and it couldn't be censored? Well, you see, 
Bitcoin can't be duplicated. It's a digital form of money, but it can't be duplicated in the way that you can duplicate other electronic or digital assets. So for example, if I send you a PDF, you can make a hundred copies of that PDF and send it off, right? Or if I send you an MP3 or you send me an MP3, you can make a hundred copies or with videos or a Word document, Excel spreadsheet, anything like that. Most things that are digital can be duplicated. Bitcoin can't be duplicated in that way. That's one. Then the other is, it is censorship resistant. Right, I got it can't be duplicated. But what do you mean by censorship resistant? Bitcoin cannot be controlled by any government or banking authority. It's outside of the banking system completely. It's entirely peer-to-peer. By peer-to-peer, I mean that I can send you Bitcoin. You can receive the Bitcoin. You can send it on to somebody else who can send it on to somebody else. We don't need any third parties like a bank or a government to give validity to that exchange, to that transaction. Nor can a bank or a government stop that transaction. You know, if you send me Bitcoin, a government can't intercede and say, hey, wait a minute. They can't step in the middle and say, hey, wait a minute, we'll have that. It's outside of the banking system. It is fully decentralized. All right. Well, how come it's decentralized? And then also, how come it is uncopyable? Is that what you said? How come it's decentralized? It's to do with the nature of the programming code on which it runs, which is called, for simple terms, blockchain. And then how come it can't be copied, it is, as you said, uncopyable, is to do with the design of the blockchain. All right, go on. So if you think of a ledger, a financial ledger, a series of accounts of money going from A to B to C to D to E and F, then on such and such a date, this purse money went from here to there. And then on such and such a date, that money went from there to there, right? One way we could record that is in a book, a ledger. And it has all, every new entry, every new transaction is added to the bottom of the ledger. What blockchain is, is a digital equivalent of that. So instead of writing it down in a book, it's written in, within computer code, in blocks. And so, you know, like there might be like a hundred ledger entries here, and then that block is filled. So then we write another ledger entry here, and then that block is filled. And then we write another, and I don't have another third fist, right? But then we add another 100 entries. So what you get is a series of blocks. Whereas in a traditional ledger, say like an account book, you have 100 entries in one page, and then you have 100 entries in the next page, and 100 entries in the next page, and so on, right? You got that bit so far? Yeah, all right. Go on. So then, supposing with this digital ledger, with this blockchain, we are about to write the hundredth transaction. The way the blockchain works is there are hundreds, and in Bitcoin's case, thousands of copies existing at pretty much the same time. So as, as a transaction is added to one blockchain, one copy, it's copied many, many times over through creating this network effect of decentralized copies. So there's a copy over there and there's a copy over there and there's a copy over there and there's a copy over there. There's copies all over the world, all of them of the same blockchain, of the same ledger, the same set of transactions. So the hundredth transaction here will be copied over many, many times over. Now, if somebody tries to make up a transaction, the hundredth transaction, and it's a fraudulent transaction, now, as these transactions are being copied, all the copy makers, known as miners, but that's another conversation, all the copy makers or the blockchain validators, they're checking that not only is the digital ledger, the blockchain transactions the same everywhere, but as new ones are added, they are also accurate. So if somebody puts in a fraudulent transaction, one that doesn't fit the chain of transactions, then the other copiers will reject it. And then if more copiers or validators or miners reject it, then it doesn't go through. So everybody is constantly checking each other's transactions to make sure that it's accurate. Who is this, everybody? What do you mean by validators? Miners? What's that? All right. So I said earlier that Bitcoin was a computer code, a decentralized computer code. Let me refer to a centralized computer code. Let me, re- let me give you an example of a centralized digital currency. So if you think of a banking chain in your country, in Britain or America or France or wherever you happen to be, the records of transactions are kept in the computer servers 
of that bank. So for example, HSBC has a record of the transactions that have been conducted on its ledger. And it's only on the HSBC servers that those transactions are stored. And same with Barclays or Goldman Sachs or the Cooperative Bank or Santander Bank. They keep their transactions to themselves. Now, a decentralized network, anybody who's got sufficient computing power can run the program to validate Bitcoin transactions. Now, when Bitcoin was first launched, what happened was well, people were, were running the Bitcoin program or the Bitcoin protocol on their computers. You could run it on an ordinary laptop and get more and more Bitcoin as you did so. But as more and more people got involved, you needed more and more computing power. So people started using more expensive, more powerful computers. And now we've got the point where we have specialized computers, which are known as Bitcoin miners, which do nothing else other than validate the transactions, check the transactions are, are correct, and update the Bitcoin blockchain ledger. Does that make sense? I think so. So anyone can, can run, a, run one of these Bitcoin computer programs. So anyone can get involved. So people all over the world have been getting involved. So I imagine people have been getting involved in doing this since, uh, what, 2009, you say? Yeah, that's right. They have been since 2009. And more and more people have got involved. And what, but there's something else about the Bitcoin mining program or Bitcoin protocol or Bitcoin algorithm, which is no matter how many specialized computers, also co called nodes or Bitcoin miners, are validating the transactions on the Bitcoin network, there is a fixed amount of Bitcoins that are issued every 10 minutes. And these new Bitcoins are issued as rewards to those running the program. All right. I think I'm... Oh, no. Say some more about that. I will say some more. But this video is quite a bit of work doing it this way. Just want to let you know that. So please subscribe, like, comment, all that business. What was the question again? Say a bit more about... The rewards, that was it. And a thumbs up. Give us a thumbs up. Come on. Thumbs up. Click that. Click that thumbs up. Now, this is a really great, easy to use website that caters to, for different levels of exp expertise, beginner, advanced and expert, explaining the blockchain, everything. It's got a whole lot more information than I've covered in this video. And it also has this section, explain it like I'm five. Now, I'll link to this in the description below so people can go check it out. And in subsequent videos, we can cover other stuff that you'd like to know about Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies. What would that be? Get yourself a good quality hardware wallet. I recommend the Ellipow wallet. Discount with the link in the description below.